Yo, party people, it's Ashley of SingleWomanChronicles.com, where being single is a beautiful choice rather than a miserable circumstance. And today's episode is sponsored by my books, Single Woman Chronicles, an Atlanta love story, kinda, which is a story about a young lady dating in Atlanta, and it is Le Ghetto. <laughs> and if you have dated in Atlanta, you really understand it. It is a fiction, but it really does have a lot of subliminal messages that will help you in your single journey. So although it's funny, although it's dramatic, although it's entertaining, you will be able to relate to at least one character. Also, my nonfiction, How to Ex Your Ex, A Guide to Getting Past Unhealthy Relationships. I am pretty sure you know somebody that knows somebody who is going through a breakup if you are not going through one yourself. So cop the books. They are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, books on Google Play, and Audibles. So get your listen on if you don't like reading. Okay, today's episode is about not quitting. Do not give up. Okay. The reason this came to my mind is because this last week, um, I just had a really tough emotional week and it was weird because I had just came off my birthday week, which was very great. My birthday was better than expected. I usually celebrate the whole month, but right now I am trying to get down to the nitty gritty on my discipline. I'm trying to reach goals. So I really have to stop procrastinating and just jump and head first, which is what I'm doing. But I was just so emotionally just drained and I didn't know why. Um, I think a little bit of it was a lot of fear, a lot of distractions, a lot of discouragement, disappointment, doubt, but I'll get into all that. But before I get into it, I just want to talk about this verses in which we had... If you guys have not watched this four hour versus, I know four hours sounds like a long time, but get over to your nearest YouTube and start watching this versus. Listen here. First of all, it should have been two separate verses. They should have let Ray J and friends do one and then go and let Omarion and Mario do theirs. These were two comedy shows slash performances slash roast battles. It was... I didn't think anyone could top Bow Wow and Soldier Boy. Oh, but they have. <laughs> like, how, how do we get here, people? <laughs> so we have round one with Ray J singing his little heart out, Ooh, off key. Then we got Sammy being a butthole and just <laughs> knowing he sings better than everybody and just ravishing in that and then we have Bobby Valentino with his jacket that was the same size as him <laughs> that's what my best friend said and I'm like yep his jacket is the same size as him and then we have Pleasure P who's giving supreme uncle energy with his dad bod like supreme uncle favorite uncle at the barbecue energy honey like <laughs> it was entertaining and then Jeremiah, who bless his heart. Was he high, y'all? I don't know. Like, <sighs> what this performance showed me is that never give up on your dreams. Because when I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts, which is Here's the Things by Kev on Stage and That Chick Angel, they were talking about how these are not, y'all have to put this in your mind. These aren't just people walking on the street. These are artists who have been on the charts, the billboard charts. These are famous people who have made careers off of singing. And they sound like that. They've literally built careers off of singing. So if this doesn't prove to you anything else, it should show you that it's not about who's the most talented. It's about who works the hardest and who believes in themselves the most. Okay? Because... Talent ain't going to get it if you don't work hard. Talent ain't going to get it if you don't believe in yourself. Pastor Darius Daniels, one of my favorite pastors, he always says, reaching your destiny is not just about what you believe about God. It's about what you believe about yourself. You have to believe in yourself. And we see these men on this stage believing in themselves very heavily. Okay? And let's fast forward to Mario and Amarion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I thought Amarion could sing until this verses. 
I don't, I, I just don't. And then he has so much audacity that he just, you know, has been going around making it seem like he made B2K because he was the lead singer. And then now we see the truth <laughs> that <laughs> you did it, sir. We just, we liked you because of B2K. You could dance, you were a performer and you blinded us because of your voice is just not, it's not. Mm -mm. And a lot of it, and when you think about it, a lot of the songs were built for someone who really doesn't have a voice like that. <laughs> so again, this further proves that don't don't give up on your dreams. Now Mario, oh my God, this is triumph. This is underdog. Cause I'm not gonna lie to y'all. When I saw that there was a versus with Mario and Amarion, I said to myself. Mario ain't got that many songs. Like, I know he's going to lose because we're thinking, like, Omarion is the bigger star. But I was always a fan of Mario. So, yeah. But this Mario is the depiction of if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. That man was ready. He didn't have to go and have rehearsals or nothing. You can tell that he'd been practicing. And I know this because I went to the original reunion tour with him and B2K and Pretty Ricky and everybody. And I said to myself, like, oh, he been practicing. Like, you could tell he been practicing because dude was on it, honey. Like, on the show, he was singing. He was dancing. You could tell, like, he didn't miss a beat. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this is why a lot of the times I, I pulled a biblical message out of it. I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I like to pull biblical messages out of things. This is why God is so big on preparation. Because when your time comes, he wants you to be prepared. So in your seasons of silence, your seasons where you feel like God isn't doing anything, it's because he's waiting for you to do something because faith without works is dead. We know that, right? So what that means is if you're not doing any work towards the assignment or the promise God has given you, then that means you don't believe God's word. So if Mario was just sitting back, letting life happen, he hasn't really been out for real. He hasn't had no new music. He hasn't really had a lot going on. But as we can see by his performance, he been practicing. He never stopped. He never gave up on his dreams. Even his audacity and confidence was there. So what I'm saying is, this is a great example. And this is a great example of how your pride can make you feel like, oh, I don't need to practice because it's obvious that Amarion and the mother jokers weren't practicing. <laughs> It is obvious. So you need to constantly stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So you can get on your stage and you can be Mario. Whatever your stage is, if that's writing, if that's speaking, if you're um, an engineer, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're an administrative assistant, it don't run without you. So get on your grizzy. If you're a real estate agent, if you're a trainer, if you're... I'm trying to think of everything. <laughs> if you are somebody who works in insurance, like get on your grizzy, stay ready. So you don't got to get ready. Be Mario. Don't you be on Marion in this fight. <laughs> don't give up. Okay. So I want to address a few things that make us want to give up. The three things that I've battled with is discouragement, fear, distractions. Okay. So my top one has always been distractions because if the, the enemy can't stop you, he'll distract you. And the way distractions work is the, they drain you from the emotional and mental and physical energy that you need in order to carry out whatever your assignment is. So this could be, I'll give you a great example. Um, I don't even want to put, put that out on front street. But <laughs> I'm trying to think because I ain't really, I, I was going to talk about family, but I'm like, I ain't trying to put my family on front street like that. Uh, one, one thing, one big one that comes for me is like, say for example, I'm like, oh, this week 
I don't want to, you know, drink. I don't want to party. I want to budget. I really want to focus on my focus. I don't want to eat crazy because I'm trying to lose weight. As soon as I say that and put that out into the atmosphere, my phone start buzzing. My hotline start blinking with all these invitations, all these people who want to invite me to open bars, all these people who want me to go on vacation and they just so happen to have a free ticket and a free vacay room as soon as I want to focus on my focus. As soon as I say it, all these distractions come and I know if I pursue these distractions, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to procrastinate on my goals. I'm going to be stagnant because if you go and you shift and you dis distract yourself with all this fun, because fun isn't bad, but you want to get your work done first. If I'm distracted by these things and want to be drained physically, I'm going to be mentally distracted and drained of my emotions and all of these things. So I can't really focus on what I'm really trying to accomplish and do. And many times we get stuck in seasons, not because of our circumstances, but because of the things that we're allowing to keep us from working hard and doing what's necessary. A lot of the times doing what ne what's necessary is something we don't want to do. For example, for me, I'm a writer. I love writing. Could write all, all day long. But in order to be a successful writer, I have to do marketing. I have to email people. I have to do SEO stuff. I have to do background back. Um, back page stuff, like not back page, Lord, they're going to think I'm on back page. Lord, no, <laughs> I mean stuff in the background, like on WordPress and stuff. Like I had to build, like know how to like work the w WordPress and my website and stuff. So those things I don't want to do, but they're necessary in order to get to the goal. Even when you're working in your passion, there are going to be things you don't want to do. So you have to understand that. So a lot of the times your circumstances aren't changing because you aren't changing. Like you really have to become a new, different person, a better person, a more disciplined person, a more self-controlled person in order to reach those goals. And a lot of the times what happens is you get distracted. And then you, when you allow those distractions to take you off course, you find that when you get back on course, you're right back where you were when the distractions took you off course. So if you want to stop feeling frustrated, want to stop feeling stuck, stop allowing those distractions to get in your way. Because guess what? When you come back from being drained by all of those things that were taking you off course, you're going to be frustrated and you're going to want to quit because you're tired. You're exhausted. You've drained the energy that you were supposed to use for the assignment. You've used it over here in these distractions. So you got to stay on course. And it is easier said than done. I am not going to lie to you. You're going to fall. You're going to trip up. You're going to stub your toe. But you got to just keep going. Don't give up. Ray J and Omarion didn't give up. <laughs> like Jeremiah Post Self came out there singing horribly. Did not give up in that verses. He didn't give up. Y'all can't give up. Y'all got to keep fighting. Y'all got to y'all gotta have the audacity of Ray J singing One Wish. That's how you got to attack your goals. That's the audacity you need. You cannot give up. Another thing that tries to discourage you is discouragement itself. A lot of discouragement comes from disappointment. When you wanted something really bad, you prayed for something, but you expected it to happen one way and it hasn't happened yet. You think because it hasn't happened that it's not going to happen. That doesn't mean that. It just means it hasn't happened yet. If you think back to the Bible with Sarah, Sarah and Abraham, they waited like 30 years for a child. They were in their like 90s. Sarah was 90 something when she had a child. And in the midst of waiting, she got tired. So she went and produced a child for her husband because in that time, the culture was if you couldn't have a child as a wife, you can um, have your servant have the child for you. So Hagar produced a child with her husband and all literally all hell broke loose. And when you get disappointed like that, hope starts to hurt. Dream, like they say, a dream deferred. I forgot that quick. It, it, it missed me, but y'all know what I'm saying. But hope hurts when you've been disappointed a lot. Hope hurts when you've been fighting for a dream for a long time and it feels like nothing is happening. But don't allow that to make you quit. You have to ask yourself, have I done everything I can to make this happen? 
And if you're honest with yourself, a lot of the times, no, is the answer. A lot of the times it's no. Because for me, if I'm thinking about my dreams, like as a writer, I write well, but the business part, the things that puts me, the things that I need to do that others won't, I haven't done those things. So I can't sit here and complain about being where I am. Like, no, a part of this is you. You need to work harder. And I get that. You need to stop procrastinating. And I get that. I understand that. So I can't sit here and have this pity party because God didn't move something. He waiting on me. He can't open the door if I ain't moving towards it. <laughs> like, like, he can't. So don't allow the disappointment. You have to be honest with yourself and you can't allow those negative thoughts to attack you. Because a lot of times those thoughts in your brain, oh my God. Oh my God. Like, that's why you really got to make sure your mental is right. You got to be meditating. You got to listen to affirmations. You got to listen to encouragement, speak like encouraging speeches, like your Les Browns, your Eric Thomas, your Lisa Nichols, like your Jim, uh, what is it? Jim Rohn. Like you got to listen to these people because they're going to motivate you. It's, it's spiritual motivation, but there's also mental motivation. Your, your spiritual motivation is your pastor, but you need somebody else to motivate your mental to teach you how to think, to let you know that, like Les Brown says, you don't cry to quit, you cry to keep going. Because success is hard. Success takes tears. Success is difficult. But pick your heart. Is your heart going to be staying the same or is your heart going to be fighting for it? My heart is fighting for it. This week has been hard for me. Had an emotional week and didn't get to eat no sweets or drink no alcohol? That is tough. <laughs> that is hard for me, okay? All right. And the last thing is fear. Fear is so, it's interesting because fear shows up in so many different ways. It doesn't always show up as like fight or flight response type thing. It shows up as you procrastinating. It shows up as you not taking step one. It shows up as you feeling like you're not good enough to do it. So you just don't, but do it anyway, do it afraid. Just do it afraid. Just do it and stop. I think fear really messes us up because we be thinking too far about the outcome and not what, what step we on. It'd be 10 steps. We on step 0.5 and we think about step 10 and we so scared of step 10 and we only on step 0.5. Like you can't be scared of step 10 if you ain't even took step one. <laughs> like stop being worried about step 10 until you are step nine. Like one step at a time. So when you find yourself trying to start something and you start getting anxious because you're thinking about all the steps, ask yourself, which step am I at? Why am I focused on step nine when I'm only at step two? Focus on your focus. <laughs> That's the issue. So I just want to encourage you, do not give up. Do not quit. You can do it. And it's really tough because the messaging in our society will make you want to give up. But propaganda has always been me the media's message. It wants to focus on the negative constantly. So you have to find the light in the darkness. We know that we just went through the overturning of the law about, you know, abortions and things. Don't allow that to discourage you. I know it's a tough, tough time, but we just got to keep praying for our nation and just keep praying for everything that's going on and just stay hopeful because we can't give up in the fight. Because when we continue to focus on what's wrong, we're just going to be like, you know what? I don't even want to do it. I don't want to protest no more. I don't want to vote anymore. I don't think it's ever going to change. That's not helping nothing. We got to keep going. We got to keep fighting. We got to keep making our voices heard. Like, keep going. Don't allow everything to discourage you. Find your light in the darkness. You know, weeping and endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. We got to be focused on our joy. And I know if you like me, I'd be like, bro, listen, God, I've been in the dark too long. <laughs> like, when my, when the morning coming, where is the morning? <laughs> like, where is it? <laughs> where is it? But you just got to stay hopeful because who wants to live a hopeless life? Even when hope hurts, it's better than living hopeless because at least when you wake up every day, you still feel like you have a purpose. You still feel like you can fight. You still feel like there's something for me to do today. Even if it's for, even if it's for me to wake up and say, give someone an encouraging message. Pray for somebody else. 
go hug your mom. Like, your mom loves you. She wants you to be here. Your dad loves you. They want you to be here. Your friends love you. They want you to be here. So stay encouraged. Don't give up. Even when the distractions try to take you off course, get back on course if you fall off. Y'all know how many times I done fell off my weight loss journey, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> like, I don't care. Because cause what, what else I'm going to do? What else I'm going to do? Just get fat and just say forget it? No. <laughs> like And like my weight loss journey has nothing to do with working out. Like, if y'all saw me in the gym, y'all be like, oh, sis, sis a beast. Sis, sis a beast. But when you see me in the kitchen, you be like, sis a beast <laughs> still. <laughs> because I be eating all crazy. <laughs> so now I'm trying to adjust to a lifestyle change of like really training myself to not emotionally eat. To like change and substitute certain things out that are like affecting me. I started Weight Watchers. This is not even on some some like sponsorship type thing they ain't sponsoring me at all wish they would but like i started weight watchers because i'm trying to catch what's in my diet to see like what can i change because a lot of the times it's the little things like the little things you can change in your diet to make a big difference and that's what i'm trying to do so yeah do not give up on anything that you really want to do keep fighting ask yourself the question have i done everything i can do to make this work and if the answer is no that you keep fighting. And even if the answer is yes, keep digging. Okay, what else can I do? Because sometimes your season could just be be still. It could just be be still. Maybe you're working too hard. Maybe you need to rest. Because a lot of times in rest, that's when our good ideas come. That's when our next step comes, when we rest. But too many times we, we don't take the time to rest. So maybe this is your season of rest. So just wanted to encourage you today, don't give up. We can't give up. We got to have the audacity of all those men that were on that stage and verses. All right. All right. Till next time. Bye.